Okay, so say we have two vectors in R2. Let's say vector V is 1, 4, and let's say our other vector U is 4, 1. Now if we want to draw these two vectors, we can start it here and say, well, vector V would look like this. Vector V. And vector U would look like this. Now if we want to find the angle between them, we can see here that there definitely is an angle. We can call the angle theta. Now, the, the, the formula that we use here, we would say that cosine of theta is equal to v dot u divided by the length of v times the length of u. And if we want to work through this, we could say, well, v dot u is just here. We'd say 1 times 4 plus 4 times 1 is 8 divided by, well, what's the length of v? Let's figure that out. The length of v is the square root, which is equal to the square root of v dot itself. So 1, 4 dot 1, 4. It's all square root. And we would find that to be the square root of 1 times 1 plus 4 times 4, which is 1 plus 16, which is equal to the square root of 17. And likewise, if we were to find the length of u, it would just switch. The 4 would be here and the 1 would be down here. And when we dot, take the dot product of u dot u, it would be, likewise, it would be 4 times 4 plus 1 times 1. And take the square root of that, we would get root 17 as well. So on the bottom here, we get the length of v is root 17 times the length of u, which is also root 17, which equals 8 over 17, is the cosine of theta. And now, if we want to find theta, you can just type this into your calculator. You can say, well, theta is equal to the arc cos of 8 over 17, which equals some number. It's around, I think, it's about 66 degrees, I think. So roughly 66 degrees. And there you have it. We found the angle between these two vectors. Now let's do another example. Let's say we have some other vectors, maybe that look like this. There you go. We have vector A and vector B. Now we'll apply the same formula which is one vector dot the other one divided by the first vector's length times the second vector's length. And so let's define these. Let's say, well, a is equal to negative 1, 3, and b is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So if we apply this formula, we would see that cosine cosine of theta is equal in this case to a dot b over the length of a times the length of b times the length of b and this would look like so so let's just work through this we would say equals a dot b which is negative 1 times 4 which is negative 4 plus 3 times 0 this is negative 4 and we want the lengths of a and b. So the length of a would be, well, the square root of negative 1 times 1 plus 3 times 3, which would be the square root of 10 times the square root of the dot product of b dot b, which would just be the square root of 4 times 4 plus 0. So it would be times square root of 16. And then if we wanted to find the cosine theta, or sorry, if we wanted to find theta, we would write theta is equal to the arc cos of, ah, sorry, I guess this would reduce a little bit more to uh, root 10 times 4, because that's the square root of 16. 
and these would cancel out leaving just a negative 1 on the top. So if you'll excuse me, the arcos of negative 1 over root 10, which would equal some, some angle here. This is our angle theta. Uh, that looks like it's past 90 degrees. It must be somewhere around, let's say, 100. We're very roughly saying that's 100 degrees, something over 90, as you can see here. And we'll do one last example. Let's say, let's pick this vector. It looks like this. And we'll call this C, and we'll call this vector D. And right away, you can see that this is, in fact, going to be 90 degrees. But say we don't know that yet, we're just going to double check. So we'll go back to our original formula. And we'll say, well, actually, we'll see what these are first. So we'll say that vector C is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And vector D is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. Okay, and now so when we go back to our original formula, we'll say that cosine of theta is equal to c dot d over the square or over the length of c, sorry, times the length of d. The length of d. And we'll just work through this. We'll say that this is equal to uh, continuing from here, we'll say the dot product of c and d is 0 times 4 plus 4 times 0 is equal to 0 over some number. I'm not even going, we don't even have to work this out. We'll just say over the length of C times the length of D. And right away we'll see that because we're dividing 0 by this number, that the cosine of theta will equal 0 no matter what. And we know that if you just type this in your calculator, the, the arc cos of theta, you'll find that theta has to equal 90 degrees. Therefore, theta is equal to 90 degrees. Now, in, previously you would just say that these two vectors are perpendicular, but another word that we use in linear algebra is called orthogonal to describe these two vectors. And ortho what orthogonal means is basically it's just any two vectors whose dot product is zero. So we could have vectors, say, in three dimensions, let's, or four dimensions, or a hundred dimensions. As long as the dot product is zero, those vectors are said to be orthogonal. So, to do a quick example, let's say, let's change colors. We'll say maybe we have some vector um, one negative one two zero. We want to take the dot product of uh, with another vector, and we would say maybe. Um, Two, zero, one, and negative two. When we take the dot product of these two vectors, we'll see that it's going to be two one times two plus negative one times negative two. Oh, sorry, that should actually be a positive. Um, sorry, I'm scratch that. Um. So we'll see that 1 times 2 plus negative 1 times 2, um, well, here, let's just work this out. This will be, this will equal 2 minus 2 plus 0 plus 0. And at the end of the day, this all equals 0. So these two, these two vectors here in R4, they're four-dimensional. We can't actually draw them 90 degrees away from each other, but they are definitely orthogonal.